What's up guys, Zach with Wire Customs, and today we're gonna to be talking about putting a flathead V8 in a Model A and what kind of issues you could be running into. Real quickly guys, I am a veteran who loves supporting veterans, more specifically, fallen veterans. They have a very near and dear place to my heart. There's a mechanic-based company that sells soap bars, uh, red and white blue hats, uh, and stickers. Every purchase from this company, they donate a flag to go on a fallen soldier's grave on Veterans Day and Memorial Day. Um, these flags are really important to the fallen families. It reminds the family that we still care and support about their fallen loved one, that it still means something to us. All you have to do is to support fallen military members is just to buy some bar of soap uh, that actually smells really nice, has pumice in it, and it's a mechanic-based bar of soap. This is gonna get the dirt, the grime, the transmission grease, or axle grease, wool bearing grease off of your hands and make it smell good at the same time. So go to greasygarage.com, buy some soap, a hat, a sticker today, and support a fallen military member. So putting a flathead V8 into a Model A is one of the most traditional hot rodder things you could possibly do. Guys started doing this a long time ago, and luckily for us, it's actually pretty simple of a process. It may seem overwhelming from the outside looking in, but after you complete it, it is actually a very easy engine swap and the Model A will love the flathead V8. It'll feel like you've really gotten a lot more horsepower compared to the four-cylinder. Really makes it a lot more peppy. There's a lot of different options on how to get that done, but we'll go through that in this video. The very first thing you should be considering is, should I box my frame? Uh, there's a lot of variables to that answer. Um, depends on how much horsepower your flathead's gonna be putting out. If you're gonna have a really, really hot flathead, uh, I would definitely recommend boxing the frame. If you're gonna go bone stock flathead, technically, it'll run it just fine. Now that answer itself probably stir up an argument, but what I can tell you, not just from my experience, but what I've seen from others, is a mild to stock flathead has been driven in Model A frames that were unboxed for decades, uh, for years. Uh, there's thousands and thousands of people who have done it. My personal Model A, I had the perfect frame no issues, no stress cracks. It was like the golden boy of frames. I put a stock flathead V8 in it and it takes to the frame just fine. But I also put a K member into it. And uh, that's also gonna strengthen the frame and keep it from flexing so much. Um, but also just as much, thousands and thousands of people have boxed the frames and had amazing results. What you need to consider when you're deciding that for yourself is how much horsepower am I going to have? How hard am I going to drive the car? How nice is the frame that I have? So if you have a frame sitting on the floor in your garage, box it, it's out, it's out in the open. If you have a, a completely stock Model A car with a four banger in it, and you just wanna put a stock flathead V8 in it, technically you could just do the swap, knock it out and get it driving in a weekend, but that safety and that decision is up to you. Now, the only part I'd consider to be mildly complicated would be getting the suspension correct, um, splitting the wishbone, and getting all your alignment the way that it should be. So in order to mock up the motor, you kind of have to know what your suspension is going to be like. You kind of have to have ride height already. Now, if you're going to have an aggressive rake, the level of the motor is just as important as if you're not going to have any rake at all. So with the Flathead V8, they like to have the carb surface on the intake to be at zero degrees at ride height. That allows you to have the bowl set correctly and allows your carburetors to run better. So depending on whatever your rake of the frame is going to be with the suspension, you need to have that figured out so you can set, mock the motor up with the carburetor at zero degrees level or as, as level as possible. Now at this point, I like to think that the car builds itself. You know where the engine has to be level. Now for me, I like to put my motor mounts flush or just below flush uh, the frame, the top of the frame. Flush looks really nice. That just brings the motor higher up into the cab. Um, but then once you figure out how you like yours, then that determines where the transmission has to be because the transmission just bolts up right to that. Um, that is if you're using a flathead transmission and not a T5, something with a drive shaft. Now you have a lot of options when it comes to transmission mounts. One thing you'd actually just look up and buy instead of digging through graveyards like I did is Millworks Hot Rod. They sell really great AV8 um, kits. 
So that's gonna give you motor mounts, transmission mounts. You can also get a cross member that allow you to run the original wishbones on the back rear axle, even if you're running a drive shaft. So that's kind of a money saver just by buying that using your original rear axle with the original uh, wishbones, but with a modern transmission and a drive shaft. So that's gonna hold them and give you the correct angle on the rear axle. Now, what I did for my transmission is I dug through graveyards and found a, an original frame from a 1939 Ford. I cut it into a K member, as you can see here, and that gave me my transmission mount. So like I said, it's all about the intake surface at ride height. So that determined how high or low my transmission had to go. Now, if you're set up similar to mine, you will have to cut the Model A cross member in order to get the um, torque tube to clear. Now you have a lot of different options when it comes to pedals. Uh, I'm using 39 pedals off of my 39K member. Um, that's a, a really traditional hot rod, use what you got type situation. Um, there's a lot easier options than searching and digging and finding all that, all that stuff originally. Um, you can buy new kits. Also, Millworks Hot Rods kits to run an underfloor booster and a master cylinder. Um, you can get the 39 pedals and run a, a, a split master cylinder. Old Yankee Speedco actually sells those kits to change your single master cylinder to a split master cylinder. So I'll throw that up here so you can have that information too. Now when it comes to rear axles in your AV8 swap, the sky's the limit. You can use whatever rear axle you determine is nice for you. Um, if you're doing a simple AV8 swap, you can use the original banjo. It'll technically hold up to a stock flathead V8, as long as you're not trying to do burnout, stuff like that. Um, the original banjos are actually really nice rear axles, but if you upgrade to a V8 rear axle, which is a, it's gonna give you juice brakes, it's gonna give you more dependability with the V8, you're gonna have to shorten the torque tube on that rear axle, and the spring perches are gonna be wrong because the Model A is a monoleaf above the rear axle. Um, everything with hydraulic brakes later on was a leaf, I believe, behind the rear axle. So um, you're gonna have to do some modifications to the rear axle itself. Now here's some more good news. Um, if you run a flathead transmission, that transmission will actually bolt right up to the Model A torque tube. The only difference is that grease cup has a different bolt pattern. Now you're just gonna need the V8 grease cup for the rear axle, and that's gonna bolt right up like it was meant to be that way, just cause there is um, almost no difference in the torque tube uh, other than length between the V8 and the four cylinder. So just make sure you get that rear grease cup or that coupler that, that bolts on that torque tube. Now, if that's the route you end up taking, the Model A rear axle flathead V8 transmission, that's gonna determine where that engine actually sets in the frame, how far forward it's going to set. So once you get that transmission slid into the rear axle and the splines lined up, that's gonna give you a front measurement for where the motor mounts have to be on the frame. So now we can talk about cooling your flathead V8 once you actually get it all inside the frame. It's gonna be really tight against the radiator. Um, you can use the original Model A radiator and have someone put four outlets on it instead of uh, two, like the original Model A one. But I like to upgrade to an aluminum radiator and paint it black, which I have not done yet, to make it look classy. Um, flatheads are expensive. It's nice to cool them down. Now, if you want to be traditional and get a, a, a mechanical fan, you can put the fan on the generator, depending on the type of intake you're going to have. Or I've seen guys actually get the fans to fit on the crank, like how they used to be uh, on the earlier flathead engines. Um, but it's going to be tight. I, it's tight for me, and I even moved my radiator up from the cross member. It's not on the cross member. It's sitting in front of it. But that all depends on how you want yours to look and what kind of tradition, non-tradition that you're going for. Now I've seen guys put the V8 in here and not split the wishbones. They made brackets and cross members and all sorts of stuff to get the original wishbones just to bolt right up how they work from factory. Um, I think that's too much work compared to just splitting them and getting the alignment even better than what it was from factory. The wishbone setup is all determined on how low or how tall you want the car to be. The lower the right height of the frame is, higher the wishbones are going to be on the frame. The higher your frame is, high voice status, the lower the wishbones will be on the frame. Um, caster changes a lot. Uh, uh, a lot of people run different caster on these. Um, original Model A caster is 7. Um, a lot of guys run 10 to 12. A lot of the racers run even higher, around 15 range of positive caster. I have a video of splitting the wishbone 
explaining the caster. So make sure you check that out if you want more information on that. Now you have a lot of different steering options. Uh, I try to go as traditional and time period correct as possible. So I have an F1 column. I have a video on just mocking up and making the F1 column work with the Model A's. So check that out if you want more information on the F1 columns. But I made the F1 column come through the frame with a bracket that I made myself. This is the closest style setup to original Model A, giving you uh, very similar to original Model A controls. It's a push-pull style setup, but if you want something a little bit easier, the Vega box with the D-shaft, if you weld the D-shaft to your column, is even easier. You could put the Vega box underneath, giving you a cross steer. This is the push and pull steer, like how the Model A came originally. Um, if you go with hydraulic brakes, you're going to need a, a control arm like this to connect to the push-pull style because the more uh, modern hydraulic brakes, if you're using original style, were a cross steer. So you need to make a little conversion here to make that cross steer a push and pull steer like a model, original Model A. If you use the Vega box, you can use these spindles like this. These are 39 spindles. So you can use 39 to 48 spindles, I believe, with the Vega box. So that gives you a lot more options. Or if you just wanna go Speedway, and get yourself hydraulic brakes with discs or hidden discs inside the drums. The sky's the limit on Model A's. There's a million different things you can do, but just to be specific to the motor, once you put a flathead V8 motor in here, the original Model A box does not clear without some type of modification or some type of aftermarket headers. The stock flathead V8 headers manifolds does not clear a Model A steering box. A lot of guys will put the steering box on top of the frame. A lot of guys will pull the steering box further back. A lot of guys will push it forward and have the column drop more inside the cab. There's a bunch of different options, just so you understand what your options are so you can figure out what best suits you. Now, of course, there's a bunch of other little tiny things that you need to do, wiring. Uh, there's a lot more to the steering if you want to throw brakes on it or not. But I think that's about the gist of it when it just comes to putting the flathead V8 into a Model A frame. Um, you can still run hood sides. You can still run your original cowl. You don't have to flip it. Technically, it can clear, um, but it all depends on how, uh, how you want to set up your measurements, your clearances, all that kind of stuff. But you have options, and I'm just here to explain your options. You can determine what's best for you and your car or what look you're going for. Now, if you feel like if I skimmed over anything too fast, just shoot me a question in the comments section. I'll answer every single question on the video. Um, I hope this helps. I hope this is information for you. Now, if you enjoyed this video and you want to support my small business, I do sell t-shirts and hats. Uh, just reach out to me on Facebook, on Instagram. I don't have a website for selling them just yet, but I'm working on that. Now, get off of YouTube and get your shift together. Let's